back again. So the story on this engine. So my decision was I am going to try and clean it up first. I called the place that I got the engine from and they said that if I have an issue and I can't get it fixed then they will replace it for me. But for now I'm just going to go ahead and try and clean it up, get these valves to seat properly and then do a compression test on it and make sure that they're seating properly and I got a good compression. At that point I will move on. This is what I got going on. Got service mostly clean, shoved socks inside the holes for the cam and the holes inside here where the timing goes, the timing chain, and I'm just doing the cleanup process. Okay guys, so I jumped ahead a little bit, but let me explain to you what I've got going on. So I tore the top half of this engine off. So let me show you what I removed, the bolts that you need to remove, and how you can get it down to this point if you have a valve that's stuck and how I kind of remedy that stuck valve. I've done this a couple of times and every time I've done it, I've had success to do it or with it, but I was hoping I wouldn't have to on this engine. It is what it is. You run into obstacles, you run into uh, setbacks on swaps or builds and this is just one of them. So starting off, what I removed was my valve covers. I've got one on either side and you got each one has well, five 10 mil bolts that hold the coil packs on top. So you move those five 10 mil bolts. They go here, 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 and here. But they're all studs that hold the coil pack on. So you move those, coil pack just pops off. And then you got four eight mil bolts right there in the center. You remove those and the valve cover will just pull right off. So moving from there, to get the intake off, to remove the intake, you have a coolant line passage right here and that attaches down to your vent line and then you also have this line here you got to remove mine actually broke it's not a big deal um, and you got your vent here that goes to your valve cover and you've got one two three four five so you got ten eight mil bolts that hold the valve cover or not the valve cover eight mil bolts that hold the intake to the engine so once you got all of those bolts that hold this down off you can go ahead and pop this whole thing off and then underneath that you actually have this plate that sits right in the center so this plate sits right up here right across the center that's where it sits and to get that off you first have to remove this coolant line which is held on right here with these four 10 mil bolts. You got all four of them right there. And then one more right over here. Whenever I removed them, because they are coolant lines, I got a little O-ring. I put a cap inside each one of these holes. That way I could clean this up and not have to worry about blowing stuff down into this because I'm going to use compressed air. But once you got that coolant line off, then you can remove all of the 10 mil bolts that hold this plate on. And you also have to take off this cap. You have two caps. These go down to your knock sensors. And your knock sensors go straight through there and bolt down into the center of the, uh, the block. You gotta remove both of your knock sensors to get this plate off. So once you got your plugs off, knock sensors out, this is off, then you are at the same point that I am, which is right here. And what I'm doing is I'm cleaning all of this surface because I have new gaskets to install. And to fix my stuck lifter issue, what I've got is I've blown every one of these holes out. I've blown them all out as best as I could. And then I took my rockers and my push rods out of both sides. All my rockers are out and my push rods are out. That way my spring is fully depressed, pulling that valve up. So it's pulling that valve outward. And then what that does is it allows you to blow down in these holes and not have to worry about blowing stuff into your cylinder. So with the valve fully seated, because that spring's pulling it up, you blow them out. Once you got them blown out as good as you can, I take PB Blaster, 
or WD-40 or whatever, but PB Blaster works pretty good. And I spray it down inside each one of these holes and I totally fill to the top of the valve seat. So once I got that filled, I take a hammer. So say these ones are all filled up right here. I got all of these filled up with PB Blaster. What I do is I take a hammer and I lightly tap on all of these. I tap on every single one just to make sure they all press down just a little bit and pull back up. And then what that's going to do is open that valve just a little tiny bit and allow that PB Blaster to kind of seep in there. And it's not okay, there's not a problem if you have PB Blaster in your cylinders. That's not a huge deal. It's not going to cause any problems. If anything, it'll clean the top of the, the piston up. But from there, what you do is... You let it set for a while and while it's setting what i've done is all of my rockers and push rods and my rocker guide that sits on the bottom of this i actually have sitting in a bucket of chem dip which is carburetor cleaner or parts cleaner this stuff is extremely strong so what i do is i let it soak in here and i actually did this prior to going to work this morning so this stuff's been in here for pretty much 12 hours. So I just got it all setting down there and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it out and spray it off with a pressure washer. And I actually have a hot seat steamer that I use but the pressure washer would work just fine. So I'm gonna pull that stuff out now. It's time, it's been setting all day. Spray it off and then I'm gonna make sure that I got this surface totally clean and ready for new gaskets. But before I put new gaskets on, put it all back together, I'm going to spray all these holes out and get all that excess PP blaster out and make sure that the valves look okay. Make sure there's no more crap stuck down there and on top of the valve. So then I'll put my cleaned rocker arms, rocker guide, and push rods back in, tighten them down to the torque spec that they need to be, and then I will see if it will turn over right after I pull these socks out of there because those socks go down into the that one goes down into the cam journal and this one goes into the timing along with this one this goes down to the cam journal too so before I turn it over I'll pull these socks out but then I'll turn it over and make sure that it turns over free and that all the valves are opening and closing the way they should and then this should hopefully work and I'll be good to go and then I'll get it all back together as long as all these work just fine, then I'll get it back together and I will do a compression check on all the cylinders and make sure that the compression is still fine. If you have a valve that's still sticking, your compression is not going to be right. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish cleaning this up. I'm going to spray all these holes out. And then every time I spray one out, say I spray this hole out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it out with compressed air just to clean it out. And then I'm going to check in there. If it's clean, I'm going to take a rag or something just jam in that hole. That way the next one that I clean out on this side doesn't blow crap back into that hole. So that's where I'm at now and that's the process I'm going to take. Okay, so once I've got everything that was in that parts cleaner out. I blew it all off after I washed it off with the um, pressure washer. Now what I'm gonna do is all these bolts, they still have a little bit of crap and corrosion around the head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it to a wire wheel and buff them real quick. That's not a big deal, it's pretty simple. And then on all of these rockers, they have little bearings inside here. I don't know if you can see those. And this is supposed to rotate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through on every single one of these and make sure that they are free and they rotate easily and I'll put a drop of oil on each side of this in the bearings and work it back and forth for a little bit. That way it has oil in it, some clean motor oil before I reinstall it. And my push rods, they have a hole in the end. See that? This one's got water in it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take compressed air. You should be able to see all the way through it. See if I can get you up with the light. 
You should be able to see all the way through that. Well, maybe if my light didn't mess with my camera, but yeah. So I'm gonna take compressed air and blow all these out. And then I got a flat surface. So I'm gonna take each and every one of these on a flat, clean surface. And I'm going to roll it and just make sure that it's flat and make sure that it's straight. I don't want to put a bent push rod back in the engine. And I don't feel, I don't have a feeling any of these are gonna have a problem, but preventative measure, I'm gonna go ahead and check them. And as long as everything comes out right, so as long as all these don't have an issue, if one of these has an issue, I'm gonna get a whole set. I'm not even gonna chance replacing just one. I'm just gonna put a whole set in. Same thing with this. If I got one of these messed up, I'm gonna put a whole set in. I'm not gonna chance it, so that's where I'm at right now. I'm gonna buff all these. I'm gonna lube all these and make sure that they're free and they work properly. And I'm gonna blow all these out and check to make sure that they are flat and true. And then I'll reinstall them. got going on here is I've got all my bolts cleaned up you can see they're all nice and clean took them to the buffer I put oil on all of these and they actually it works the way it's supposed to they were actually all just fine I didn't expect there to be any problems but they all turned out just fine I just use this I know it's ancient but took this the way this works you just squeeze the handle and oil comes out the end I just put a drop of oil on all these. Uh, I took the compressed air, blew out all the holes on all of these in both directions really good. I looked through them all. They're all fine. They're all clear. I took them and I rolled them on a flat surface. Not this surface. This surface isn't perfectly flat. But they're all perfect and there was no issues. So this is all now ready to go back into the engine. But it's always better. I didn't expect it to be a problem. But it's always better to check and find out there is no problem than to not check and later on find out there is an issue. So that's what I went ahead and did. I went ahead and checked it and found out there's no problems. It's all good. It's going to be put back. So now we just got to go over and work on the engine and get the valves and make sure the valves are not stuck. Make sure that they're going to be working properly. So I'm going to blow the hole, the, uh, the port hole out and make sure there's nothing left in there. Kind of check it out. I'll show you guys how it looks after I get it all cleaned out versus the way it looked before and then we'll reinstall the rockers push rods and the bolts torque them down and turn the engine over and make sure that it rotates so let's go do that okay so to finish work on the engine what i've done like i said was i blew all these holes out and then i actually filled them up with some pp blaster oh you can't see in there very good but they are 10 times better than they used to be so I'm gonna blow them out once more and make sure whenever you gotta blow these out you have these ports plugged that's for the timing chain this one goes down to the crank or not the crank sorry the camshaft this one goes down to the camshaft as well and any other holes that you don't want stuff to fly into you have plugged for instance all these water ports I have a plug in them they all have plugs in all of them there's a plug and a plug over there and then I also put my valve covers on just temporarily. I don't want stuff flying out of there and looping over and falling back in. So now I am ready to blow these holes out with compressed air. Okay, so I've got all the holes blown out. And you're probably not going to be able to see down there very good. But they are a heck of a lot cleaner than they were before. They're not going to be perfect. I mean, unless I pull the head off. I'm not going to get it perfect. Um, what I'm looking for right now is to get it to not be stuck. I don't want to try and crank this engine over with a starter if I've got a stuck valve. So, blew them all out. They're all clean. I have now pulled the sock out that I had jammed in these holes. As you can see, timing chain. That one had the cam in it. And this one back here had the cam in it. Sorry. And I pulled those out. Now I've just got to install my... Uh, push rods, my rockers, and my rocker studs. So let's get those installed. 
Okay guys, so I've got all the push rods installed and now I'm setting all of the rockers on. So for anybody who doesn't know, this little round cup right there actually sits over top the push rod. And then this swivel has notches on the edge. If you can catch that. A little focus. There's notches, anyways. It rides down in this little aluminum channel. The other side, this side, rides on the spring cup. So, to install these, it's simple. Just take it, set it down on top of it, and that's it. And then you take your bolt and you line it up with the bolt, and then you snug them down by hand, and then you go through and torque them. So, that was a success. Uh, the valves are now opening and closing fully on all of the cylinders. I just went through and did a hand compression check, so I turned it over. Uh, and I dumped a little bit of oil down inside the cam journal and turned it over, had a compression gauge hooked to each one, and <clears throat> by hand, I got up to around 50 psi. Uh, so I think tomorrow I'm going to attach my starter down here because it's not attached probably bolt my pan back up put a little bit of oil in it and turn it over with the starter attached there I got a little button i can press and it'll turn it over and it should give me a better reading for psi on my compression but it worked it turns over now smooth there's no more crunching and grinding and nothing weird so I think I'm done for the night. What I might do, actually what I'm gonna do, is pull a lot of this front stuff off because I need to get this block ready for paint now. I'm gonna go ahead and get all this front crap off and really the power steering pump and the mounts. And then I'm going to clean it thoroughly and then get it masked up and ready for paint because there's a lot of grime stuck down here. There's a lot of stuff down here. So I gotta get all that off before I can paint it. But, for the night guys, I'm gonna call it a night. Um, I'll be back tomorrow to do the compression check fully on it. So, see how it goes. Thanks for watching guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Catch you guys in the next video.